Hello, um, I'm Anne Marie Quinn and um, I'm an artist. Um, and I've often not had an awful lot of money to buy art materials, but these days when you can't get out to, to buy them anyway, the, all, the, all, the art, all the shops are closed. Um, it's just this activity reminded me of how you have, I had to improvise to find ways of, of just playing about with colour and building images that inspired me and, and took me to a different place. So I thought I'd, I've been doing that a little bit the last couple of days and thought I'd, I'd, uh, I'd share it with you. So basically, um, this is what this is what I have been working on. It's, um, it's just a basically, it's, it's it's almost like a patchwork quilt really of, of colours built up and layered and then framed around the edges with this kind of and the and the sense that because you're using the same set of colours, there's a lovely relationship with colours, but it's also unexpected because it's the sort of chance thing of, of um, seeing what happens when unexpected things come together. So basically what you need for this is, a, the weekend newspapers are good with a bit of glossy paper from the magazine and um, and the, the sort of broadsheets. So you need about um, maybe six wonderful, wonderfully colourful bits of newspaper. That's quite a good page there. I find food is very good. Food can be very colourful. Um, I've probably torn all these out now. But um, essentially you need to get, select yourself um, five or six pages, colourful pages, and then fold them, quarter them like that so that you get a square and then cut, cut out each square. And then what you need to do is make sure that each square is slightly smaller than the one before and you layer them up so that you can see that there's a sort of reduction in size building up okay and this becomes your palette that's the kind of color that you're going to work with so there the, the that's your that's your palette that you're going to work with the background i started to cut things out here but the, the background piece is one big square so that's your kind of background piece and then you fold that in half one two four times so you want to end up with 16 squared sections and if you fold it a few times you get it so that it's nice and flat and once you've got that as your background these pieces start to cut up you can fold these into 16 as well so there's a lot of folding and cutting before you actually start to collage with this activity so you're folding twice three times four times and this doesn't have to be precise it's not precise folding it's just to get a sense of I quite like it when it's not actually precise I certainly am not measuring so cutting, and actually sometimes you find on the back of the image that you've chosen, there's an equally interesting colour and pattern going on. Okay. So if I do that, basically the aim is to just start to select and place the colours that you've cut out over the top of your background piece. It's like a, it's certainly not a jigsaw, but it starts to feel that you're just placing, you're just building colours, turning them upside down, making them so that, de deliberately making them not match. Um, I think the aim is really to stop seeing them as images and just see them as colours, let the colours build up. And actually sometimes you might want to, that's quite a nice shape of, of colours there, the, the orange and the blue ribbon coming through there is quite interesting. So I might leave that as a space. So instantly you've got your sort of first two layers built and then go to your smaller next layer up exactly the same, fold, and fold it in half, and half again, so that you 
to get in those 16 squares that constantly reduce in size. a quick way of cutting them before. And if you find that they're too big, not quite small enough to mask, or you don't want to completely conceal it, then they're not quite small enough, just trim them a little bit. That you've got you can still see the colour that's at the back just shifting through it's really satisfying starting to see you know there's lettering here on an advert and it's really satisfying to just see that disappear and just see it become a sort of random bit of white mark emerging small. That's better so that I can see the colour coming through. And sometimes I don't layer them on every one. I like to just sort of see them build. That's a little bit dull actually. I might just not use that one. building up like that okay and then that really builds you go back to your palette and you take your next layer of newspaper you continue to um to fold and cut and build up these are just some little squares of paper that i've cut out from an earlier collage a little bit big actually if i can find a smaller one smaller pieces building up they're ever decreasing they become like little piles but as you do as you as you do build up um i use a print stick i couldn't find my print stick so i had to resort to this stuff here which is i really like it's double-sided tape so just a little bit of double-sided tape or tba glue whatever you can find flour and water <laughs> i would my mum used to give us flour and water when we were children because we didn't have glue however you make it stick Get it stuck down. Okay, so that's how you build. The other thing I should have said is when you're creating your palette of squares ready to be cut into the sort of um, for, your, for your collage activity, don't throw the the um, the bits that you reject away. Keep those because you'll need those later. Okay, so I'm going to move all that to one side. This is just a way of showing how the process builds. And then this is a piece that I've been working on, um, which just needs some of the topmost squares securing. So I'll do that with double sided tape. What I really like about this is that you start to just enjoy seeing the orange. There's a lovely bit of orange here. Orange is sort of shiny bit of orangey yellow with a light coming into that really vivid green. And then the sort of yellow continuing down there and moving into the blue and then going into this red. It's just a lovely sense of losing yourself in just very simply looking at how the colour all relates and builds and... It's quite time consuming, but the, the, um, I find it very therapeutic. Okay. Now I can put 
the fleas on. And then actually you can go back to those pieces that you discarded and make very tiny squares yourself. Um, just to make the colour dance a little bit even more than it's dancing already. Um, that a bit of green. Green patches. Just to somehow start to dance across the surface and move your eye in a different way. Lifting the colour as you go. You can see that my square making. isn't measured, it's very random. And this is actually where a print stick might be better because this double-sided tape on these little tiny fiddly pieces can be a bit, a bit annoying. But I like those little green pieces over the top. I might do more of that later. Okay, so the way this then develops More stuck on. Sometimes you don't know what you've stuck on and what's remaining to be stuck, which can be a bit frustrating if the, the door suddenly opens and the wind <laughs> blows your collage, you beautifully laid out pieces apart. Sorry, a bit of green on that bright bit of orange. Actually, what I've just done there as well, that's interesting because I could have actually decided to have them all cornered up, all the pieces coming into a corner. There's a sort of, I think there's um, um, a patchwork quilt called Log Cabin, which shows um, but it's the building up of lines of um, strips of fabric. Um, just organised into lines. Anyway. Keep them in the middle for now. Okay, I won't do any more adding to that. That's the sort of thing that you can add to ad infinitum once you've got everything up. <laughs> so there's, there's your kind of basic collage, which, as I said, can be added to these circles. These squares can get um, gradually, gradually smaller. Um, just a, a way of extending it, um, on my piece here, you can see that there's a frame. All the leftover little bits of colour here were all added to a little frame here, which creates another sort of kind of thought focus, really. They are like... Sort of mandalas really, you can spend ages just looking at these afterwards and enjoying letting the colour uh, wash over you. So to create the same idea, just get a piece of paper, a broadsheet paper, like this, and keep the fold because that should be kind of middle, that's quite a useful thing to keep. And then with print stick or double sided tape, whatever you've got, down. This paper is a bit more flimsy than newspaper. Okay, I'll secure it within the bit of paper. Edges down. Okay, 
And then the next thing is to just create a sort of frame that's pretty even. Handy if you've got a great big ruler, like I have. this out. And then all those leftover little bits of paper that you've not used, or even from your, your squared pieces, you don't, you don't use all the squares, now have their part to play in bringing it all together. Sided tape again or print stick, and then just do this in sections so that your tape goes on the paper. And then the leftover papers that you've got, handy if you can use the same ruler. same width that you need. And then actually these are just cut into, into strips. Almost like mosaicing, really, it's like working with mosaic, mosaic tiles. And then all those little pieces, those little pieces of strips of paper, little tiled pieces start to get positioned around the outside. colours that you've got going around the border are all relating to the colours that are in your collage. So yes, yeah, so as this piece starts to come together, you've got the border coming along the top and the border starting to emanate down the sides. It's very satisfying seeing this start to chime in. And you will see that you'll want to add more as the piece, as you look into your squares, um, I noticed the other day as I was working on And those little flickers of green that I was adding on the top just to make the, the sort of colour relationships, the yellows and the and the oranges and the reds in the background. Those, those little flickers of bright green are really a sort of dancey and um, jazzy, add a little bit of, well, a lot of movement, a lot of dancing. But the other thing that, that I noticed when I was working on this one last week was... Um, as I was looking through the magazine again, it was this. It was this sort of advert about fancy handbags and and shoes. And there's a lovely pair of snakeskin shoes here, really brightly coloured, sort of bejewelled, um, <laughs> but very blingy. And I thought, well, that, that's quite fun to add. I think that might be another pair. I think there's some shoes in the background there. And then I put a bit of blue over the top. All, what I wanted was just a, a flicker of the gold, the sort of sumptuous sumptuous sort of texture of that um, colour 
coming through but I put some glue on it just to bring it back just to unify it all back but I love that colour there dancing um, so yeah so it, I think it's the sort of thing that you could add keep adding to and looking at um, I just really like that sense of building you know you could build squares of these like a, like a big patchwork um, and it's just so interesting how out of those six colours uh, six selected bits of paper from the newspaper, sets of colour, essentially what I described as your palette to begin with, your palette, how, um, how incredibly different they are and how rich the colours look in spite of it simply being bits of newspaper. Okay, so I hope you enjoy that activity. Thank you. Bye.